How's it going guys? This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. In my hands right here is the OG. It is the Akidio Node, the original version. And what made this so outstanding when it first debuted was that it was the first, I believe, the first external GPU box to feature chips inside that worked natively with the Mac OS with no extra hacks needed. So that was really cool. Now since then, there have been several other external GPU boxes uh, one of the ones that stands out is the Mantis Venus, which we've covered here uh, quite a few times over the past year. Uh, but this one was the original, and I really love this, this external graphics box. But that all said, this thing wasn't perfect. For one, it was a fingerprint magnet with that black paint. Uh, number two, it's pretty heavy. And then you have this handle here, which is you know helpful, but it's kind of awkward because of the way it's positioned at the very back of the unit itself. Another thing that some people didn't particularly care for was the fact that there was just one Thunderbolt 3 port, uh, so you couldn't daisy chain. This would have to be at the end of the chain if it's chained at all. Uh, and then there's no display port connection. Uh, the screws, while handy, you have these thumb screws here. It was kind of awkward to actually remove the cover so that you could access the GPU inside. Let me just show you how awkward it is to open. So kind of awkward, right? <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? And then turning it around, you can see the inside there. Very large device, uh, as far as length is concerned, very long. Um, and then you have you know, the inside, which is gonna be more than big enough to accommodate the largest GPU. So, great device. However, many of these complaints have been addressed in the follow-up. Not necessarily the follow-up, but the pro edition of the Akidio Note. So let's check that out right now. So here is the Akidio Note Pro. Obviously the big difference here is that it's not as long of a device. So it's shorter, it's gonna probably be able to fit on your desk easier. That said, it is a little bit taller, so keep that in mind. One of the things that I like about this device is that it doesn't use that black paint that picks up fingerprints so easily. So it's not gonna be nearly as much of a fingerprint magnet as the original Akidio Note. Now here's something that I really like about this device, this little thing right here. This is actually a handle that recesses down into the device itself. So if you press on it like this, you can actually raise the handle up. And the, the fact that the handle is in the central location here allows it to be balanced when you pick it up like this. So it's not so awkward like the original Akidio Note where you have that handle at the end where it was just kind of awkward to hold it. This is so much nicer and so much easier to get out of the way when you don't need it. Now the front of the device is about as simple as you can get. Just a slab of aluminum here, the Akidio logo, and the Thunderbolt 3 text. That's it. Let's turn it on around. The back of the device, you can see I already have my GPU inside, but the back of the device has two Thunderbolt 3 ports, so you can actually daisy chain this. And both of these ports are capable of providing up to 60 watts of power to a host device. So if you connect this to your 13 inch MacBook Pro, you can charge at full speed. There's also a display port connection, which is gonna allow you to connect to an external display, 4K, 60 Hertz. And then on the bottom here, you have, ah yes, a power indicator. Then you have your power plug port and you have your power switch. And this is a 500 watt SFX power supply on bottom. Now, the location of this power supply is important because if you notice, you'll notice the exhaust fan is now pointed downwards. And you, of course you have your power supply fan as well, but it's interesting because there's this little notch here that allows the fan to breathe and allows the air to escape. And then lastly, you'll notice these four rubber feet on the bottom of the device to keep it secure on a desk. Now, one of the cool things about the Akidio Node Pro when compared to the original is that the thumb screws actually stay with the device. On the other one, if you remove the thumb screws, you could, you could lose them, but these stay connected to the device. And what makes it really cool is that this top part just slides out like this and removes like that. So no awkward uh, pulling out the entire uh, cover from the chassis. It's super easy to remove the cover and to insert your GPU inside. Now inside the box you have, of course, your GPU that I have installed. You have your power connectors, you have your thumb screws here, and these are extra long because the GPU is sort of recessed down here inside the Akidio Note Pro. But it is super easy to install a GPU inside this thing. 
In my opinion, it's much easier than the Akidio Node and probably one of the easiest installs of any external graphics box that I've tried thus far. Okay, so let's go ahead and reattach the cover. Really doesn't get easier than that, I'm telling you. Super simple, super easy, and you're ready to go. Okay, so now let's look at some of the details from system information on macOS. So we'll just open that up. And now we see our video card. It recognizes the AMD RX Vega 64, the eight gigabyte card. But let's mosey on over to the power section of system information. Let's see how much power is being provided to the MacBook Pro. You can see there's 60 watts and it is currently charging and the Note Pro can deliver power from either of its Thunderbolt 3 ports. Okay, so here is my setup. This is the Akidio Note Pro. It is connected, it is powered on. You can see the little power indicator, the little blue light, and you can see the Thunderbolt 3 cable going to my 2017 MacBook Pro. And of course, you can also see the external display hooked up. This is of course connected to the RX Vega's DisplayPort connection. So I'm able to get enhanced graphics on this external display with my external GPU. Now, one of the special things about the Node Pro compared to other external graphics boxes is that it contains two Thunderbolt ports, which allows for daisy chaining. So this allows me to interface directly with the device connected to that second Thunderbolt 3 port. So in this case, I'm using the Sonnet external SSD. This is the extremely fast SSD. You can find more details in our full review. But the point is, is that you can access this SSD or any other Thunderbolt 3 connected device using just a single Thunderbolt 3 connection that goes to the Node Pro. That is one of the advantages of daisy chaining with Thunderbolt 3. So what about graphics performance? Well, in our previous video, we tested out the Vega 64 GPU and found that it did provide a noticeable bump in graphics performance when connected to an external display and when running benchmarks like Heaven, for instance. If you want more details on the performance of the Vega 64, then be sure to check out that full video. So as we explained previously, Apple still does have a way to go when it comes to supporting external graphics setups, but the Akidio Node Pro is a definite step in the right direction as far as build quality is concerned, ease of use, and installation. So once macOS is enhanced to better support external graphics, the Akidio Node will be right at the top of the heap as far as recommended external graphics boxes are concerned. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.